Thanks all uh, for joining. My name is Shubham Chauhan. I am a senior product manager uh, working in Microsoft 365 platform. And today we'll be talking about adaptive card based loop components. So that's a mouthful. Uh, hence, uh, the agenda for today is actually to get started with the context. Uh, what's loop? What's what's loop components? Uh, if you're not already familiar, then introduce adaptive card based loop components. Uh, share what's the end user value and the developer value. Uh, then uh, present a demo. Uh, it's a recorded demo uh, because we didn't have much time for a live demo. Uh, and then uh, how can you as an end user or as a developer get started? And then add a, uh, a quick recap at the very end. Yeah, so let's get started. Um, now setting context, um, we all have seen more change in the past few years uh, in the way we work and the technology that enables it. Uh, then probably most people would have seen or probably would see in a generation, and I, I believe most of you might relate to that. Uh, the data which you see right now on the screen, screen is coming from uh, Microsoft's Work Trend Index. Uh, it's a survey uh, conducted across uh, 31 countries with 30,000 people or respondents. Uh, and here's a very interesting insight uh, which we see from this uh, particular data. Uh, we see that on one end, employees want more flexible remote work options, which is 73% of the respondents. But at the, but at the same time, we also see that uh, these employees also want more in-person collaboration, which is 67%. This is what we are we, we have termed as a hybrid work paradox, uh, where people want the best of both worlds. Again, the data on the right uh, talks about how this further uh, or, or emphasize, emphasizes how people are you know, generally overloaded in current hybrid setting. Uh, there are a lot more meetings, even though uh, the people have kind of stopped going to uh, offices. And uh, people are also doing a lot more context switching, uh, with 42% of the attendees saying that they are multitasking by sending emails and pinging people over chats while they're still on the call. Uh, so this is a summary of what we have termed or coined as a hybrid work paradox. And then, uh, in the next slide, uh, we talk about another paradox, uh, and eventually I'll talk about the opportunity which we saw from this. Uh, this one is called the productivity paradox, uh, which is essentially coming from the context switching, which I mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, according to the research done by uh, you know many reputed institutes such as Harvard, it turns out that average information worker at a Fortune 500 company toggles between different apps and websites nearly 1,200 times per day. Uh, that number might seem Huge, but uh, this this actually talks about That's us. Uh, yeah, and uh, this amounts to around five weeks per year, or nine percent of a worker's annual time at work. So all of this uh, toll is coming from context switching. Now these two paradoxes, which I shared, uh, the hybrid work paradox as well as the productivity paradox. Uh, Microsoft saw some opportunity in this, and uh, uh, the opportunity uh, we saw is uh, how can we support distributed teams uh, with the need for flexibility and human connection in the hybrid world without uprooting their way of working today so we don't want to don't want people to change entirely the way they work but how can we build something or provide our users something that they can use it or leverage it, uh, leverage it as a tool uh, without having to you know just uproot however they were doing their, their work earlier so this is what we termed as the loop opportunity uh, these are a couple of uh, the value which we uh, want uh, to address through this opportunity, which is through the loop product. Um, the idea is that it will bring people, teams together so that they can work together even when they're apart in a hybrid setting. Uh, secondly, uh, these uh, teams can see everything they need uh, for the successful for the success of their projects in a single place. And then thirdly, uh, the content uh, which they see in a single place, it always stays in sync so that whenever people collaborate, they see a single source of truth. Uh, this is the Microsoft Loop opportunity. We are not talking about, we will not be talking about all of this, but rather the last pillar, which is the third pillar, which is staying in sync and on track. And this is where adaptive card based loop components come in. So what are adaptive card based loop components? Now we are moving to the introduction section. Uh, I've just summarized a lot of things uh, in a couple of slides, but I uh, guess there might be a few questions uh, which we can address offline. Uh, so I'll move to adaptive card based loop components. Um, adaptive cards, I believe, should be a familiar term uh, in the community. Uh, 
So assuming that uh, adaptive card based loop components, uh, these are units of productivity which enable users to embed, share and collaborate on live external content. It can be 3P, it can even be Microsoft like 1P content, which is non-native uh, across Microsoft 365. Uh, and complete tasks in the flow of their work. Uh, we'll talk about how this happens through the demo as well. And for the developers, uh, it embodies the build once, work everywhere model that we have for most of our platform capabilities. Uh, there are four particular values which we talk about, or prom promises rather, which we uh, talk about while talking about uh, loop components. Uh, the first one is live. Uh, live essentially, it, it means uh, what the word says that the content uh, should always uh, stay latest, uh, even if there are multiple instances, they remain in sync when updates are made. Uh, second one is actionable. Uh, we don't want content to be static. Uh, it should not just be a static uh, you know, update, which keeps on, uh, which stays live and keeps on updating, but rather we want the end users to complete some task or a workflow in in line uh, without having to context switch. Uh, the third one is embeddable, uh, which means that the content needs to be uh, part of the context. For example, part of the email body or part of the uh, chat uh, over which certain ideas are being discussed. And the last one is portable, which means that the content uh, should be uh, portable across Microsoft 365 hosts uh, that support loop, loop components. And, uh, and these components should just work even if these are, let's say in Teams or Outlook. Uh, on the right, we have just two examples of uh, you know, Asana, GitHub, and some, some sample adaptive card based loop components that we had designed with these partners. Uh, but yeah, uh, we I think a lot of things will get clear once I present the recorded demo. Oh, uh, sorry, before that, I'll just emphasize quickly on the developer and end user value. Uh, the end user value uh, we have just covered, uh, the end user should be able to search and share external content. Uh, from users app of choice, for example, let's say a user is comfortable working in Outlook. Uh, so user should be able to search and share content in Outlook and should also be able to move the content, let's say from Outlook to Teams uh, uh, seamlessly. Uh, that saves a lot of time because let's say there's another user which is more comfortable in Teams uh, or in the chat app, uh, then the user, other user should be able to just come across that content without having to context switch. Uh, thirdly, the user should be able to complete tasks and workflows in line and the content should sh uh, should always stay live uh, as we covered in the last slide. Uh, now coming to the developer value, uh, build once work everywhere is a is a promise that we have for a lot of the platform capabilities, adaptive card based loop components also adhere to the same. Uh, we currently have started supporting uh, these loop components uh, in Teams and Outlook. Uh, probably you are already familiar with some first party loop components, which uh, by which I mean there are a couple of uh, fluid-based loop components such as the meeting notes probably which was noticed in the team's meetings and um, the loop components which get embedded in the chat wherein you can collaborate with other users. So those are native loop components. Uh, here we are talking about uh, extensible loop components which our developers can also build. Uh, the loop components stay uh, in sync and automatically work in every additional host app that we enable. So right now the support is only available for Teams and Outlook. We are right now in preview, uh, and I'll share more details uh, in the later slides. Uh, and we are targeting preview in the loop app by the end of this year. But eventually, the goal is that we will kind of we will start support. Uh, we'll start supporting uh, the loop components in, in in the other Microsoft 365 hosts as well. Uh, and the content will be easily discovered via other capabilities such as context IQ, uh, which enables a user to uh, kind of find external content or internal content in context. Uh, that's what context IQ stands for. Now, jumping to the demo, I believe there should be some questions. And uh, uh, this demo, which uh, talks about uh, a project manager trying to complete a task by collaborating with her uh, team members, uh, how she is able to do it by working with a couple of other team members from different uh, from different roles uh, without having to do a lot of context switching. So uh, I'll play the demo in case the audio doesn't come, let me know. There should be a backtrack as well. In this demo, we will see how Adele, a product manager at Contoso, is using priority matrix for managing her team's tasks. Adele notices that an important task is missing a due date and decides to follow up with Megan from her team to add the due date. Adele copies the priority matrix link to share the task in Outlook.
The link unfurls as an adaptive card-based loop component when pasted in the Outlook Email Compose menu. Adele has the flexibility to embed the component as a link, if she wants to. Additionally, the shared location control in the header lets her view all the places the component was shared in. Adele types rest of the email and hits send. Upon receiving the email, Megan sees the loop component and updates the due date to Friday without switching context. She then shares the loop component in Teams to follow up on the pending work. Her design manager can update the progress of the task directly in Teams, and the change is automatically reflected across all locations. Thank you. Yes, uh, so this was a very brief demo uh, which showcases some of the values which we talked about earlier uh, around adaptive card based loop components. We saw how uh, Adele was able to you know, embed um, a third party content, which is Priority Matrix, which is essentially a task management solution. Um, uh, which is not Microsoft, it's an it's a third party solution. And uh, Edel was able to share that particular task uh, link, which unfurled into an adaptive card based loop component uh, within uh, the email it was embedded. And then the receive, recipient of the email was able to act upon that particular request, which is making some change in third party content within Outlook. And then she was also able to follow uh, uh, with the designer uh, for the uh, update on Teams by just you know, copy pasting the link, which again embedded as a loop component in Teams. So a lot of a lot of things happened, and you can uh, you would have noticed that uh, the end users didn't have to really go to the uh, go to the you know the place wherein the link was shared, which was Outlook, or uh, go to the uh, third party website or web app uh, to get the action completed. So it's actions like these which can probably be done in context. Uh, while we also support functionalities such as task modules and stage view, which uh, could be invoked by a button click on the adaptive card based loop component. And then that would open the entire uh, web app experience within the context of Teams. So those capabilities are all also there. Uh, do check out stage view and task modules, but as part of this demo, we didn't really have it. Uh, then I'll move on to the uh, slide, which you'll be more excited about, which is how to get started. Uh, so for end users, we are right now actively working with uh, a lot of partners, uh, first party, third party, uh, to enable adaptive card based loop component experiences. Uh, we are in a developer preview right now, uh, and then we announced it uh, in August, and we are we are seeing some good uh, uh, you know participation from the developer community as well. Uh, Priority Matrix, uh, Zoho SDP, Zoho Projects are few partners uh, with whom we have already enabled the experiences in preview, and then. Um, uh, on the right side of the line, which I've drawn, we have uh, Jira, we have Prophecy, Viva Sales, SAP, and many more partners with whom we are uh, building their first set of loop components. Uh, for developers, uh, again, uh, the first thing is that um, uh, I'll share uh, the developer public preview launch blog post, which happened in August, and also our developer documentation, which you'll find in the uh, blog post as well. Uh, the steps would be to go through the documentation. Um, these capabilities right now need a message extension application. Um, I hope few, few, few of you would be familiar with what message extensions are. Uh, and then um, there are a couple more, couple more capabilities which uh, need to be added for the adaptive cards to be uh, generated, or, or, or rather, adaptive cards to be uh, you know, branded as a loop component. Then a uh, couple of other steps are that. Uh, you have to create and move your testnet into uh, the preview environment. Uh, share the tenant ID and a screenshot from the admin portal as proof of you know, the admin rights. Uh, because right now it's a, a preview, so we have to enable your test tenant for that preview. So that's the part of the onboarding process. And uh, we will reach out to you and validate uh, the uh, information and uh, onboard you within the next 24 hours. And for any queries, there's this uh, alias AC Loops preview help, which we, which you can note down. So that's that's all the things I had in mind. Um, 
I definitely expect a lot of questions as well because I did go through a lot of content. I set the context in the very beginning, which was which talk, which talked about the hybrid work paradox and the productivity paradox, and then which led to the loop opportunity. I talked about the loop app and some of the values uh, it 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 presents to the users. Uh, it's a way to bring together teams, uh, keeps every everything a teams need to complete their project in a single place, and allows them to always stay in sync and easily connect connect with everyone through a single source of truth. Uh, the loop components, which are adaptive card based themselves, are unit of productivity, enabling end users to share, collaborate on live 3P content. Uh, they allow end users to work across Microsoft 365 and complete tasks or workflows uh, in context. Uh, and for the developers, it embodies a build work, work a build once, work everywhere model. And we, then we showed the priority matrix demo, which showcased how these adaptive card based loop components can be embedded are actionable within Teams and Outlook to begin with, and can also be ported across uh, different Microsoft 365 hubs. Uh, and then we talked about how can an end user try out these experiences or as a developer build these experiences. Um, yep, yeah, that's that's all I had for today. Uh, thank you all for attending. And uh, I'll respond to any queries uh, over the chat or offline. Thank you.